at the end of all the Jack Chick comics, they have a guy getting down on his knees and saying, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I'll do it right now. Jesus, please forgive me for him for my sins. Yeah, but you're smiling and snickering <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> that's not in the rule book. <laughs> right. If that's all it, it takes, uh, then it, I'm going to go on and merrily be an atheist and no, say... Even within Christian I, doctrine, yes. you, you can't do it jokingly. You have to actually... <laughs> All right. There's I a, mean a concept. When I, say I, I hate don't to, dip, want to be tortured forever. Well, I there's I hate to dip back into preacher mode. There is a concept. It's not simply saying you believe yes. or pretending you believe. It's the concept is to actually believe and there is along with that a turning away from the things that you did before. Now, everybody knows that that's ab- absurd because people go right back to doing it. And you see it, and that's why Christians have this term backslider. For but they get away with it. Sure. Uh, I mean, well, you, you know, don't know. Christians say everybody's a sinner. Uh, even even Christians, they're not perfect, just forgiven, right? Yeah, well. So you can keep on sinning pretty much as much as you want to and still be a Christian. Because right, the whole so principle does, is, I got mine. <laughs> so why does the fact that I was smirking when I apologized for my sins, why is that worse than... It's not... I, I don't think that it's that it's actually worse. It's that you have then given them a card to play when you get caught doing <clears throat> bad things and some, some uh, you know, smart-aleck atheist comes up to him and, said, and say... See, Russell Glasser asked for forgiveness, but then he was off there, you know, prostituting himself with hookers and stuff, and that just proves that you people are all just a bunch of hypocrites. So and they'll say, Jim Baker. and they'll say, no, because Russell Glasser didn't really mean it because he was smirking. Yeah, see that, or he didn't really mean it because he was out there with the hookers. The hmm. the fastest way to get yourself ostracized by your fellow Christians is to get I've caught doing something wrong. <laughs> just, just so we're clear on this. Yeah. I've never bought a hooker. <laughs> no, you rent them. That's right. You don't buy them. <laughs> They're not property. I've never given otherwise. any money to a hooker that I know of. And this is one of the reasons why some Christians have a problem with people like me and Dan Barker and others who sincerely believed, who went through the process that they claim is required, right. and now don't believe, and yet still manage to live uh, normal morally, ethically sound lives, although obviously my morals are considerably different from, you know, my family who are, are Christian. But uh, there's a dilemma there. And it's similar to the dilemma of, of what happens to innocent children. And so the church invents limbo, and then, then, they, and then they later get rid of limbo. But, uh, you know, that's the Catholic church. They can do all kinds of crazy shit because they got the Pope. But... <laughs> you know, I was never a Catholic. I was a Protestant, so we didn't have a pope. Right. So all of those Protestants have all these dilemmas of, yeah, and the is way- Matt still saved and is he going to heaven? And I have Christians write me all the time saying, "Don't worry, I'll see you in heaven. Once is, once saved, always saved." And then there are others who say that that's not necessarily true. Once saved, always saved isn't true, and you are going to hell because of apostasy, and that's the one unforgivable sin, and I can never be forgiven again. And then there are the people who say that um, once saved, always saved is true, but because you no longer believe, that demonstrates that you never actually believed in the first place, so you were never saved. And I think even my parents are of that posi- position. Great. That so I was never a true Christian. people out there, and let me give them something to worry about, who think that they're saved, but actually they don't really believe and they don't know it. Yes. Right. There are plenty of people out there who Which think they're Christians every Christian who are in the same boat I am. risk. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's absurd. Yeah, we got like uh, three I, minutes. I think I we're done. Had a good. Uh, uh, have a good. What about the closing? Quote? Let's let's have Dennis's Ingersoll. Right, let's let's do the Ingersoll quote. Go. All right. Okay. Is Christ our example? He never said a word in favor of education. He never even hinted at the existence of any science. He never uttered a word in favor of industry, economy, or any effort to better our condition in this world. He was the enemy of the successful, of the wealthy. Dives was sent to hell not because he was bad, but because he was rich. Lazarus went to heaven not because he was good, but because he was poor. Christ cared nothing for painting, for sculpture, for music, nothing for any art. He said nothing about the duties of nation to nation, of king to subject, nothing about the rights of man, nothing about intellectual liberty or the freedom of speech. He said nothing about the sacredness of home, not one word for the fireside, not a word in favor of marriage, in honor of maternity." 
He never married. He wandered homeless from place to place with a few disciples. None of them seems to have been engaged in any useful business, and they seem to have lived on alms. All humans tied... All human ties were held in contempt. This world was sacrificed for the next. All human effort was discouraged. God would support and protect. At last, in the dusk of death, Christ, finding that he was mistaken, cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We have found that man must depend on himself. He must clear the land, he must build the home, he must plow, he must plant. He must invent, he must work with hand and brain, he must overcome the difficulties and obstructions, he must conquer and enslave the forces of nature to the end that they may do the work of the world. Cool. That's Robert Ingersoll. Yeah. Ingersoll is one of my biggest, awesome. biggest heroes and influences. And I'm feeling good.